Once you've planked the entire hull and the planking has dried, you can then sand the hull smooth. This is one of the most satisfying aspects of the build. With medium sandpaper, use your fingers, not a sanding block, to run the sandpaper all around the hull until it's completely smooth. A sanding block can now be used to sand the very bottom of the hull in order to smooth the gap where the garboard plank meets the subkeel. Now still using the sanding block, proceed to square off the bow and stern sections of the model. Now when the hull has been sanded, shake the model out in order to get rid of the sawdust and wipe the hull down with a damp cloth. Hold the model up in good light and examine it closely. It's common to find additional areas which need to be sanded. Finish off the hull with your fine grit sandpaper. Now once the hull has been fully sanded, it's ready to accept paint. And this is assuming that you're not using a high quality wood. If that's the case, it's time for your stain. Create a mixture of about half water, half black acrylic paint and start brushing it onto the model. Do not apply paint to the top two planks as additional planking will be glued to this area later. You don't want paint here. It'll take two or three coats on the hole before the hole is done. Now observe this photo. After you've applied your first coat of paint, this is what you'll see if glue seeped out between the planks or was accidentally smeared against the hull at any point. This is something which can be painted over easily, but it can be a nightmare if you're intending on staining the hull as it's very difficult to correct. Now if you were intent on staining the hull and you've now discovered these glue spots, you might still be okay. Once the stain has thoroughly dried, proceed to uniformly sand down the affected areas and reapply stain very gently with a towel or rag in order to blend it in with the surrounding stain. If the glue spots still remain or the hole is unfixable, just simply chalk it up to a good learning experience and apply black acrylic paint once this stain has thoroughly dried. And as we'll keep learning, paint can hide a multitude of transgressions. Now if you're painting your hole, in order to achieve an attractive, consistent, and smooth hole, it'll be necessary to sand the hole in order to smooth out any imperfections which were not visible before the paint was applied. Now take a medium or fine grit piece of sandpaper and sand all along the hole again. The goal is to have a fairly splotchy looking hole when you are done. In some places the wood will be showing, in other places there will still be some paint. Now, wipe down the hole with a damp paper towel and apply the second coat of paint. When this paint has dried, examine the hole again. Does it still need work? Repeat the sanding and painting process as many times as necessary in different areas until you have a nice, smoothly painted hole. Now here's a photo of the stern section. The area in black which hasn't been covered yet is of course ugly, but note the hull. Even after correction due to uneven planking and glue seepage, after a bit of work it has a pleasing shape and color now. This is why I like these types of projects. Just about any problem can really be corrected. Now it's time for this very back piece. You'll want to cut out a piece of basswood, which is wider than the stern section, and soak it until it's pliable enough to bend around your stern section. You can then secure it with rubber bands or thumbtacks to dry. After the piece is dried, you may glue it into position and then sand to conformity. Now don't be thrown by the unpainted hole in this photo. This was just a version which was stained instead of painted. Now we'll need to drill through the plank and into the hull a little so we can install the rudder a little later into the build. And yes, this circular hole will need to be rectangular in order to seat the rudder shaft. This can be done by the use of your X-Acto blade or a mini square file. You can also leave this hole circular if you really wish and simply round off the top section of the rudder shaft later, which will then be seated into the hole. It's up to you. 
The photograph of this model shows the approximate location of the rudder, which will be installed later in the build. We'll now need to construct a stand, even though we'll not be attaching it to the model at this point. We do need to construct a stand now, however, because we'll need to drill holes into the keel to accept the stand posts. Now this following method just illustrates one way to make a stand. You can use any type of design you wish. For this one, a small particle board wood plaque was purchased at the craft store, along with a couple of decorative wooden pieces which looked like they'd be good fits for the model. The stand was painted black and a carefully cut and stained section of basswood sheet was glued to the top. Heavy weights were then set on the stand while it was drying to ensure all sections of the basswood dried perfectly flat against the plaque. The two decorative pieces were drilled in both the top and bottom, and dowel pieces were then glued into each end. The decorative pieces were then stained. The stand was carefully measured and marked, and holes were drilled to accept the decorative pieces. Red paint was then applied to the tops of the dowel pieces sticking out of the tops of the decorative pieces. The model was then carefully centered over them and lowered down until it made contact. Holes were then carefully drilled into the keel of the model where the red paint transferred to in order to accept the dowels later in the build. When this had been done, the stand was then set aside for later. Now the only problem with this type of stand is that it's not terribly sturdy and should not be glued to the model until the final stages of the build. Now I actually think the best construction stand for a model ever invented is an old sock filled with rice. And how attractive is that? Uh, the model will always be cushioned though and it will be very easy to pick up and work on a model. Now do you like this stand and pedestal look? As I mentioned before, there are a number of different looks you can create or design. Um, the above uh, aforementioned procedures is one way of a thousand to build a stand. Whichever method you choose, just be sure that you account for the rudder. It will hang down a bit lower than the bottom of the hull.